Hello everyone, my name is John McCann and I am the Tabletop Tutor. It's a Wonderful World is a game for one to five players ages 14 and up and can be played in 45 minutes. You can use the chapter guide at the bottom of the video to fast forward to specific sections of the video. This is a four round card drafting engine builder. Will your choices of which cards to build and which to discard for their precious resources lead you to the most victory points? In It's a Wonderful World, you are constructing cards and adding them to your empire tableau. Once in your empire, cards either add to your production, your victory points, or both. At the end of four rounds, use the handy scoring pad to total up your victory points. Cards that have just a victory point on them are totaled up and placed into the column here. Combo cards like these reward you for building cards of a specific color. By default, your generals and financiers are worth one point each at the end of the game. These combo cards increase the multiplier for your generals and financiers. Total up these values to determine your final score. In the event of a tie, the tied player with the most cards in their empire wins. If there's still a tie, the player with the most character tokens wins. If still tied, the players share the victory. Here are a few examples of scoring a tableau. All right, so I'm going to show you how I scored the tableau here. Uh, I'm going to use this larger dry erase pad that comes out of the Corruption and Ascension expansion uh, to demonstrate how to score. Uh, we're going to just ignore this bottom section that's specific to the expansion. So first of all, we look at each player's totals and we find the, the victory points that are awarded for based on points only, so or victory points only. So we have one, three, three, one, one. That adds up to three, six, seven, eight, nine. So the left player gets nine points. The middle player has three, 10, and one, so that's 14 points. And the right player has one, four, and three, so that's eight points. Now we look at points for scoring certain types of buildings. So the left player has points for, uh, scored points, five points, two plus three for every yellow building they created. So that's five, 10, 15, 20 points for the yellow buildings they created. The middle player scored three points for every green building they created. So that's three, six, nine points for the green buildings. And the right player scored one point for every black building they constructed. There's one, two black buildings, so they scored two points. Next, we look at the generals and the financier tokens. By default, each player, each of these tokens is worth one point. On the left player's tableau, they don't have any additional uh, multipliers for either generals or financiers, so they score straight points. So they get four points for their financiers, and they get three points for their general tokens. The middle player has a multiplier for the financier tokens, and they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight financiers. So that's one and one is two, so eight times two is 16. And their generals, they don't have any multipliers on the general token, so they're just worth one point each. One, two, three, four, five, six points. And finally, the player on the right has both a multiplier for the general tokens and the financier tokens, so their generals are worth two points each. They have three of them, that's six points and their financier tokens are also worth two points each, and they have two of them, so that's four points. Then we just total up the columns, so the left player gets a final score of 36, the middle player gets a final score of 45, and the right player gets a final score of 20. So in this game, the middle player is the winner with a score of 45 points. Each player takes an Empire card. All players should decide whether to use the A side or the B side of their Empire cards. The A sides are all unique and give each player a different goal. The B sides are all the same for giving players the same starting point. Place the game board in the center of the table. 
within e easy reach of all players. Place the round tracker token here with the green one to three side face up. Place your gray resource cubes here, your black resource cubes here, your green resource cubes here, your yellow here, your blue here, your red here, your blue financiers go here, and your orange generals go here. Now let's learn how to play. The game lasts four rounds. Each round has a drafting phase, a planning phase, and a production phase. At the end of four rounds, the player with the most points wins the game. First, the draft phase. There isn't a first player concept in this game, so just start by dealing seven cards to each player. All players look at their cards, choose one that they set face down in their draft area, then pass the rest to the next player. Refer to the round marker here to remind you which way you're passing in each round. Continue taking one card and passing the rest until you have seven face down cards in your drafting area. Next is the planning phase. Now you look at the seven cards in your draft area. For each card, you decide whether you are going to construct the card by placing it face up in your construction area or if you are going to discard the card to collect the recycling bonus indicated in the lower right side. Once everyone has committed their cards, move into the production phase. This phase consists of five consecutive steps moving from left to right on the game board. All players look at their empire tableau and count up the white cubes to determine your material production value. Gather these cubes from the game board and allocate them to the cards in your construction area. Once a resource cube is committed to a card, it cannot be moved around later. The player who gathers the most cubes of a resource gathers supremacy bonus by grabbing the financier or general token as indicated here above each of the production areas. But if players tie for the most, no one gets the bonus. If this action completes any of your cards in your construction area, return the respective cubes back to the game board and move the constructed card to your empire tableau here. If there are any rewards such as red resource cubes, financiers, or generals shown here, immediately take one of those one-time resources onto your empire card. Next, proceed to the counting up of black cubes in your empire tableau, then gather these resources and assign them to the cards in your construction area. In the event that you don't have somewhere to place your cubes, you place them onto your empire tableau card here. Once placed here, these cubes can never be moved onto one of your construction cards. Instead, any five cubes can be converted into a red resource cube. The red resources are, cubes are wild. They can be used to fill any cube requirement on your construction cards. You can even hold them on your empire card until you need them later. After the black production, you are going to continue with the green resource cube production. One of the neat aspects of this game is that after each production, you have the opportunity to complete cards and add to the engine building capacity of your Empire Tableau. So each round, you cycle through gray, black, green, yellow, and blue resource cube production. Here are a few minutia. Some construction cards require financiers or general tokens. You can't substitute a red cube for one of these tokens. You may discard a card that is under construction to take its recycling bonus. Any resources that were sitting on the card when it's discarded are lost. The resource you gain here has to go on your empire card. Once all the production phases are complete, you set up for the next drafting phase. Flip over the round marker token to the next number. This will show that the card's drafting will pass in the opposite direction. Then deal out seven cards to each player and start the next round. At the end of four rounds, you'll score and determine the winner. Thank you for watching this tabletop tutorial for It's a Wonderful World, designed by Frederick Girard, published by La Boite de Joux and Aura Games. My name is John McCann, and I am the Tabletop Tutor. 
If you enjoyed this video and would like to follow along as I share games that I enjoy, please find the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming episodes. That's all for now, and I look forward to seeing you at the gaming table.